Hello, my name is Ryan Berube, and this is my project, Developing a Procedure for Bioethanol Production at Home. I kind of got an interest for this project through AP Biology. I took AP Biology last year, and I kind of learned about all the processes of biological fermentation, and it kind of taught me um, you know, about these processes that I thought were really cool, and I really thought it was cool how we can use these processes that nature has almost engineered for us through natural selection to uh, kind of get an end product that we can use. And I think it's cool how we can use those processes for the betterment of our society, so we can use them to create renewable fuels. I also have a mechanical and sustainability interest. I think, you know, moving to sustainable fuels is one of the biggest problems that we're going to address in our world right now. It's one of the biggest problems that we need to address. Um, so it was something I was interested in learning more about, and I was also interested in using in engineering, engineering a process on my own um, that kind of works towards that goal of sustainability. This is my mentor, Professor Hunter Mack. Um, he's a professor at UMass Lowell, and he teaches uh, engineering classes at the graduate level in the College of Engineering. Uh, his research focuses on combustion and alternative fuels. Um, and I actually uh, I was kind of looking for professors who are studying things that are kind of uh, adjacent to my project so they could kind of guide me through my project. I reached out to a lot of professors in the area. Professor Mack actually responded within 10 minutes to my email saying he would love to help out. So a little bit of background, where does ethanol come from? This is kind of an overview of the process and you know what's in the middle doesn't really matter right now but it's just glucose in, ethanol out. and. So fermentation is an anaerobic process that produces ethanol, so it's respiration in the absence of oxygen. Um, yeast is used to ferment sugars into ethanol or alcohol, so ethanol is actually the same alcohol that is in beverages and stuff. Um, and the yeast that we use typically is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's just a species of yeast, and we use it a lot of the time because it's very easy to genetically engineer for better traits that make it better at producing alcohol. Um, plant matter can and is often used as a feedstock, so in Brazil, uh, most of the country of Brazil actually uses E85, it's a blend of ethanol, as their fuel in the entire country. And so their feedstock a lot of the time is sugarcane because sugarcane grows really easily in Brazil. In the United States, almost all of our fuel is mixed with some portion of ethanol, and so our feedstock is corn and maize because that's something that is very easy to grow here, we grow a lot of it. And uh, after fermentation, right, ethanol is brought to a higher concentration, to like a fuel concentration, through distillation. So this right here is 85 to 95% ethanol. Um, but after fermentation, it's not in this concentration. It used to be distilled to get to this concentration. So through my process, I did two fermentation batches. I did one five-gallon fermentation batch using 10 pounds of granulated sugar. And this is kind of like a stand-in for uh, a, uh, like a plant matter. Obviously, granulated sugar is kind of inefficient because a lot of energy has to be put in to get the granulated sugar to that point. But it's kind of a stand-in, like I said. One, uh, and I did one five-gallon fermentation batch using uh, ten gallon, two, ten gallon, or two five-gallon buckets of apples that I collected from local farms and processed. Um, I collected the apples from Tangerines and Fairmont fruit farms. Um, they were just apple drops. So that was kind of to show how food matter or plant matter that could have gone to waste went to fuel in this project. I fermented in five-gallon water jugs. So as you can see in these pictures, five-gallon water jugs with airlocks added. Um, and the additives I chose to add were thiamine, yeast nutrient, and shiitake mushroom. Thiamine uh, helps give the yeast the proteins it needs to break apart glucose and do that process that I showed earlier. Um, yeast nutrient just adds like urea and uh, diammonium nitrate. And so it just gives the yeast not nitrogen, which is a supplement that it needs. And shiitake mushroom adds ergosterols, and ergosterols are what yeast uses to build its cell membrane. So that just helps yeast withstand like higher alcohol percentages. I use Lavalin EC1118 wine yeast, and so that's just a wine yeast that allows fermentation up to around 20% alcohol by volume. I did two distillation batches, one batch for each of my fermentation batches. Um, my sugar-based ethanol produced almost a half gallon of fuel, so um, it's, it produced about, I have it marked here from when it was, that much fuel, and these are half gallon jugs. And so that was around like 85 to 95% uh, alcohol by volume, um, and so that was fuel concentration. That's what I actually used to run my engine at the end of the project. It produced less than a quarter gallon, gallon or 40% alcohol by volume apple-based ethanol, and so I'll kind of explain later why there's such a lower um, amount of like product in that batch. It was a five-gallon pot still I distilled in, um, so you can kind of see my setup right there. I did temperature monitoring with a measuring system that I built myself. Um, it was heated on a gas stove. Uh, and I cooled the condenser with ice because I didn't have a pump for the condenser, so I was just continuously like switching out the water in the condenser and putting new ice in. 
Here I have a video of my running engine. I use sugar-based ethanol, so I use this um, here, the, the ethanol from the sugar batch. It was a 79cc four-stroke carbon freight engine, so it's just a small engine, and it was completely unmodified. So yeah, that's the engine running for my project. Um, kind of what I learned from this project is ethanol production is not that easy. So I kind of showed, um, you know, the ethanol that I used or made from the plant matter, I produced much less plant matter, or pr produced much less ethanol. And that's because in plant matter, there is a lot less glucose, right? It's obviously a lot less than just granulated sugar, which is obviously 100% glucose. So in the real world, this causes a problem where even if we have a ton of plant matter, we're not going to get a lot of fuel from it. There's actually a statistic that if we were to try and power all of America's transportation on ethanol, it would take more cornfields than we have in the entire world. And it also presents a problem where, well, if it causes, if you need so much plant matter to create ethanol, then, and we have such a hunger problem in our world, right? There's a lot of areas in the world where food is scarce, right? So we, how can we take so much plant matter away from people and you know, something that could be food and use it for fuel. It also gave me a better perspective of renewable energy solutions. Uh, renewable energy is not something that's gonna come from one source. It's not gonna be just solar. It's not gonna be just ethanol. And this is something I learned a lot about when talking with my mentor. Um, I kind of learned about how you know, the, the picture of renewable energy is always gonna end up being a pie chart. Different sources are gonna be used for different things and ethanol may not be in that pie chart. But what's really important is that we continue to research solutions and we continue to research ways that we could use ethanol, maybe by finding ways to break apart cellulose, the most abundant lignocellulosic source in the world. Um, or you know, maybe it's a different fuel, maybe it's a different renewable fuel source. And then here's how my project connects to the vision of the graduate. So um, communication, I reached out to others for help and resources. I reached out to local farms. Um, I was for a while, I was reaching out to like brewing companies trying to get materials um, before I ended up like buying them myself. Um, I also reached out to possible mentors and I talked with a couple different professors from a couple different universities. Um, I collaborated, I worked with my mentor to brainstorm solutions a lot. Um, a lot of the time we would meet at UMass Law a couple times um, and we kind of talked about you know, how my process was gonna work. We met on Zoom a lot. Um, it also was something that took critical thinking. Um, obviously, as I showed, I used a pot still for distillation. A pot still is not typically what you would use for distillation to 100% uh, volume. A pot still is really for producing like a liquor or a spirit, um, where you do want more than just ethanol to come to the still, because that's what gives like a spirit its taste. So I kind of had to figure out, you know, how can I use these things, because I am on a limited budget, to work for my project. And then character. Um, through this project, I was kind of pursuing a better understanding of, you know, a really big problem in our world right now. And so I was kind of working on, you know, how how can I best use this project to teach myself something and teach myself something that's you know, really going on in the world and that's you know, really gonna impact us in the future. And then I also like to say thank you. I'd like to say thank you to my professor, Hunter Mack, uh, my grandmother, my brothers. This is a picture of uh, all the apples that we collected being cut up. Um, my grandmother, my brothers helped me cut up um, two five gallon buckets of apples and process them all. They all have to be like cooked down in this big uh, pot. Um, I'd like to say thank you to my parents. I did distillation in their kitchen using their gas stove that ran for like 10 hours. Um, that's a lot of gas. I'd also like to thank, say thank you to Tangerines and uh, Fairmont Fruit Farm. They both let me collect apple drops, and I know that Tangerines does use their apple drops for uh, different things, so they actually let me collect that for free. I'd also like to say thank you to Lucy Sisto. She kind of helped me with some parts of my project, um, apple processing and stuff, and um, she kind of gave me a connection at Fairmont Fruit Farms. And uh, that's it.